Uh, can you see that okay, or will I turn the light off? It's a little too bright, isn't it? What's wrong? You got a new pen? No, we have the same pen. Wow. Wow. You guys are just so cool. Do you want one during the game, Stephen? That's okay. I don't I don't need your pen. <laughs> right. Um Fields and uh, not quite Kepler yet actually. There was I forgot about this, one thing left to do with electric fields, but it's is extremely easy topic and it's so nice when it comes up in the exam. There's only the one formula and it's a very simple formula and it's something uh, you might have heard before. So we'll have a look at this now. Yeah. Could we? We could maybe do the questions and the homework. Because uh, it's so easy. It's so... You know, straightforward. We have one hour now. Yes. Yeah. So, um, if you cast your mind back to semester one when we were doing electricity, I don't know if you remember it, uh, we did something called a potential divider. I don't know if you remember that. Potential divider was something used to reduce the voltage in a circuit. But transformers are useful and important because they're used to increase the voltage. So what exactly is a transformer? So we'll, uh, we'll study transformers. Um, so here's an example of one. Wow. Yeah, so this is what we're going to look at today. Uh, this one here is called an Optimus Prime Transformer. <laughs> yeah. uh, these are useful for, you know, countering Megatron Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's part of a collection known as the Autobots. I can't believe you know <laughs> Look, I've been watching Transformers since before you were born. Like, this was big in the 80s, okay? Um, so, please, please. I'm sure I know much more about Transformers than you do. Uh, no, uh, this is not what we're going to study. Uh, this is a Transformer. So, uh, not, not as exciting, but let me just explain what it is. A very simple uh, electrical device. So what you have here when you draw this, this is just a piece of iron. It doesn't have to be iron, uh, a conductor. And here is um, a current um, wrapped around on the left, and here is a current wrapped around here on the right. And this is like the input, and this is like the output. So what happens here? This is an alternating current. Now do you remember the right hand grip rule? So when you have a current, there's a magnetic field. Remember the grip rule we did earlier? So if this is alternating, what's happening to the current? It's moving forwards and backwards. Yes? So what's happening to the magnetic field? It's changing, isn't it? So at the beginning, maybe it's going this way, and then later it's going the other way. And remember from Faraday, if the magnetic field is changing, if the weathers are changing, then you get a voltage. Yes. So what's going to happen is, as this current alternates, it changes the magnetic field around it, which causes a current here. We will calculate how much voltage we get here, but it will depend on three things. The number of turns here, the number of turns here, and the voltage to begin with. So they sometimes ask you to draw this. Uh, I know the font is a bit small, so what you have is the core, primary voltage, secondary voltage, primary current, secondary current, primary turns, secondary turns. And you see this here? Magnetic flux. So there's a magnetic field here that changes direction and causes a current here to be induced. Yeah. So can you draw this carefully, please? Oh, the increase. We're going to have a look at the formula now to see how it's increased. Yes, it's something they might ask you to draw on the exam.
So, I hope you can see it's a very, very simple machine. It's, it's something you can make at home. You just need uh, two wires and an iron core shaped like this. And then that's it. Now, you haven't seen these before, but what you don't realize um, if you have, you know, one of those chargers at home that you have in the wall, and it's a big box when you plug it in. So, you, like maybe on your phone or your computer, you plug it into the wall, but it's in a really big plug. You know what I'm talking about? That's because there's a transformer inside it, changing the voltage, uh, either increasing or decreasing it. So, if you think about something at home that has a really, really big square plug, a really big fat one probably because there's a transformer inside it. And if you broke it open, you'll see the iron core with the wires wrapped around it. Can you think of any examples at home? Um, in the motherboard, there is one. Possibly in the motherboard, but I'm just thinking about the plug. Heater. I don't think a heater, no. See, it's hard to tell yeah. nowadays because they've gotten quite good at making them smaller to fit into the plug. You need to think of something old at home, like an old router, an old computer. Can you think of anything with a big plug? How big? Like a big chunk like this. Mm. I have one. What? For the snake. Hey. I have the snake at my home. And it's, it's how snake? Yeah. Oh, for the uh, uh, to make it stand better, like yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then there is one, the yeah, one white. What's it called? Not aquarium. That's for fish. It's the house of the the house of the snake, <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. All right. There is one white. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you have this drawn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So, what is the definition of a transformer? Um, uh, this is the diagram of a transformer. A transformer is an electrical device that transfers electrical energy between two or more circuits. There's nothing special so far, but the key thing is using induction and it produces um, a magnetic field which changes and that increases or decreases the voltage. Now, that's kind of too long for the exam. What you would need for the exam, uh, I suppose you could just say a transformer is an electrical device that, by using induction, uh, increases or decreases voltage. Uh, that's the smallest you can make it for the exam to get the marks. So, a transformer is an electrical device that uses electromagnetic induction to increase or decrease the voltage in a circuit. Yeah. So you have two types of transformers, 
Uh, the first type is called a step up transformer, and as you can probably imagine that will increase the voltage. If you want to decrease the voltage, you would use a step down transformer, which decreases the voltage. Now, both are used. Um, for example, you know the power cables, they uh, run at 10,000 volts, but your home is only 220 volts. So what happens, you might even see them if you look around, uh, usually at the entrance to some town, uh, but sometimes it's kind of hidden away, there's a little, power, what looks like a small power station. It's not really a power station, it's just really a transformer. The power cables come in at 10,000, and then there's a step down transformer to 220 for the town. So if you ever see a little, what looks like a little power station at the edge of a town, it's not, it's a, what they call a substation, which is just really a transformer to step it down. Um, when would we see a step up transformer? Mm, usually in day to day life for you, we want a step down transformer because usually the voltage is too high and we have to decrease it to, you know, for our laptop or whatever. Um, situations a step up transformer, they wouldn't be for the home. Factories, manufacturing, cars, you don't have step up in your home. You always want to step down, decrease the voltage. Yeah. So you need that vocabulary step up and step down. Yeah. Now, let's have a look at this picture again, but just see exactly how it works. So, if I just go and draw one here, um, here is my iron core. So here we'll say there's M1 turns, and here we'll say there's N2 turns. And we'll call this voltage V1, and we'll call the voltage here V2. Yeah? Um, okay, so the current, let's say, moves in, and then comes out this way. Um, and if you remember, uh, hang on, let's see, this makes a magnet. This is called a solenoid. Do you remember solenoid? So it makes a magnet here where this end is like north and this end is like south. And this has a magnetic field around it which reaches to the one over here. Uh, goes from north to south. Now if this is an alternating current it means its voltage will decrease, get to zero and then turn around. So this voltage is decreasing which means this field is getting weaker. So the field is changing. Um, it's getting smaller. So uh, how can I draw it getting smaller? I suppose I can't really. It's getting weaker. It's getting weaker. Um, since it's getting weaker, I think we can say the change is this way. And you know from Lenz's law that there'll be an induced current and the current will flow opposite to the change in the magnetic field. So if the change is going down, it's decreasing, it's collapsing, then you'll have a current run in this way. Yeah, this is, I think, what I need. So the current comes out here. Uh, let's calculate how big that voltage is. This is induction, so we can use Faraday's law. You know that the EMF is equal to, we'll call it actually V2. V2 equals, now I don't care about the sign so I won't write it in, N2 change in flux over change in time. Now what happens is um, you can have a look at it the other way. If there's a current here then you have a magnet here as well. So we can look at it going the other way as well. So meaning on the other side, anyways, you can make the same formula. V1 equals N1, change in flux over time. 
The key is putting these two together. Here you can say change in flux over time equals V2 over N2. And here change in flux over time equals V1 over N1. But they're the same, so we can have this formula. V2 over N2 equals V1 over N1, which gives us this formula. V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2. So in other words, if we know the relationship between the number of turns, then we know the relationship between the voltages. So for example, if this is a uh, 100 turns, and let's say this has 50 turns, this one is twice as big as this one, right? So that means the voltage here will be twice as big as the voltage here. Let's say you want to make the voltage bigger. Let's say here I have 10 turns, and here I have 100 turn, turns. So what's the relationship now? Yeah, which is 10 times more? V2. So the simple formula, the relationship between the voltages is the same proportion as the relationship between the turns. You want to decrease the voltage, have less turns. You want to increase the voltage, have more turns. And this is the formula. Very straightforward. Proof, not on the exam. Uh, the formula is though, and here it is here, N1 over N2 equals V1 over V2. got this formula. Transformers are pretty efficient, at least the newer ones. Um, so often we consider them as being 100% efficient, unless they tell us not to in the exam, but they are pretty efficient. So because of that, we know from conservation of energy, whatever energy goes in here, must equal whatever energy comes out here. We don't lose any energy, especially if it's efficient. So that means the power that goes in here should equal the power that comes out here. So we can make this formula. The power that goes in must equal the power that comes out. Therefore, well, I'll write that down here. Power in must equal power out. What's the formula for power for electricity? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. uh, no. IV. Uh, uh, there is another one, yeah, but the simple, the one I was thinking of was IV here, yeah. So this is I1 V1 equals I2 V2, which means I1 over I2 equals V2 over V1. And if you want, you could say, well, this one equals N2 over N1. So you could have a relationship with the currents if you like. And uh, notice how the currents are in an opposite relationship. So um, if you increase the number of turns, you don't make it bigger, you make the current smaller. And the reason for this is to keep the power output the same as the input because the energy is conserved. So we have N1 over N2 equals I2 over I1. I don't usually use this in the exam. It's this one that's enough really. We'll have a look at some examples though, and then maybe we'll do some together. You got that formula? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's have a look at a very simple example. A small toy requires only 6 volts. However, the power it provided is 220 volts from the mains. The number of turns on the primary is 4,400. How many should there be on the secondary? Okay, so what's V1 here? Six. V no. no. V one is two twenty. V two is six. N one is four thousand four hundred. And two is what we want, the secondary. So we have can we just switch both of them? Switch what? The N one and N two. What do you mean? Why did you choose that? No, we have to one is for in and two is for out. 
One is for primary, two is for secondary. We can't mm -hmm. change the names. V1 is 220. V2 is 6. N1 is 4400. And N2 is what we want. So we can get N2 equals 6 over 220 times 4400. Uh, that goes... Um, that Zeros cancel. That goes in 20 times? Is it a 120? Mm. 120 turns. That's all there is to it. Can you write this one down as an example? You have that written down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll take turns and then that way there's no homework from this. There's only four questions and as you can see they're not going to be too difficult. So we'll just take turns. Uh, the first one, again the situation is typical for your household. You have a mobile phone, it only needs 11 volts, but the mains is 220. A transformer is used to step down the voltage. The number of turns on the secondary is 22. How many turns are there on the primary? Okay, so that should take you a couple of, one or two minutes, and then we'll write the answer up. The secondary is the phone. The primary is in, secondary is out, which is the phone, yeah. Yes, it is correct. Oh. And two is yeah. five. work out the numbers nicely for you so I wasn't expecting a point in the answer. The possible refractions upside down maybe. Yeah. 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 I can do this one now? Uh, I'll do the answer to the first one make sure you got it right. So, what do you know in the first one? Uh, do you know V in? Yes. Yeah, what is it? 220. And V out is? 11. 11? Yeah. That's the voltage you want? Yeah. And then do we know N1? No. No, that's what we want. And do we know N2? Yes. 22, is it? Okay, so that is going to be 440 when you rearrange it. 22 over 11 is 2, 2 times 220 is 440, 440, 440 turns. This question sometimes comes up in section A and it's absolutely great when it does because it's not that difficult to do. Um, here's another one to practice. An electric car needs, now an electric car needs a high voltage. Uh, it needs 1,100 volts. The main provides 220. Now, my hybrid car is the only example I can think of where I have a step-up transformer because if you look under the hood of the car, it has a big warning, don't touch this battery because it's a very high voltage battery. I'll have to check it when I go home. Uh, but I think this number could be right. It could be operating at 1,000 volts the battery in an electric car uh, but of course if the mains is only 220 and you need to charge up your electric car 220 you know it needs to be stepped up uh, the primary coil has 110 so what is the current in the secondary co coil if the mains provides 13 amps so it's a little bit harder now you might have to use a second formula as well So 
priority? Is the secondary, yes? The secondary current is 1,100. The secondary voltage, voltage. is 1,100, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was left. Which, which, I know. Uh, no, which, which one is that one? I2 is thirteen. No. I1 I2 is what you want, and I1 is 13. you got. Let's see what we get. So, do we know the input voltage? Yes, it's 220. Do we know the output voltage? Yes, 1100. Uh, do we know N1? Yeah. 110. 110, mm -hmm. is it? Yeah. Yes. And we could get N2, right? Mm -hmm. So, I can say N2 <laughs> is 110, one Hang on, don't confuse me. Uh, if I bring this, I need to bring this one up and this one down and bring the M2 up. 110 times 1100 over 220. So that goes into that twice. 550 is N2? Yeah. You got that? Now, I don't want N2. What do I want actually? I2. I2. So you know the power that goes in must equal the power that comes out. Power is I1 V1 equals I2 V2. Do we know I1? Yes, it's 13. Do we know V1? Yes, it's 220. Do we know I2? No, that's what we want. Do we know V2? 1100. Oh. So we can say I2 is 13 times 220 over 1100, cancel a zero, um, 22 goes into 110, five times, yeah, so six, 65 amps, no, sorry, I'm doing it wrong in my head, 13 over five, yeah, this sounds like what you got, uh, which is 2.6 amps. Yeah, uh, that's what you got. You got something close, but not quite. You got 2.36, isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah, you could use that and you get the same answer. I didn't. I didn't. No, don't do that thing where I say you get the same answer, then you say you don't, and then I do it, and I do get the same answer, and then you realize where your mistake is, like, oh, it's upside down. Wait, 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 wait. The N1 over N2 equals I, I2 over I1. Yeah, that's what he did, yeah. And he got the right answer. I1 over I2 equals N1 over No! You wrote it down wrong. N2 over Yes. Yeah, that's what I did. N1 over N2 equals I2 over I1.
Did you see his mistake? Yeah, one is one tab. No, we're doing it Musharif's way. Look up. Yeah, it's okay. We'll find it together here. N1 over N2. What's N1? One ten. What was your mistake? It's one ten. No, do you believe me? Yeah. <laughs> right, number three. Uh, same, same idea. You this time you want the current again, okay? An elect a power plant sends ten thousand volts to a town. The step down transformer converts the ten thousand to two hundred. The primary has a thousand windings, a thousand turns. What is the current of the high voltage electricity if the low voltage electricity has a current of 13 amps? So it's exactly the same as what you just did. Try, you get to try your formula again. Try again. Correct. <laughs> a bit of a difference between I and B. A bit, a bit. You have an answer now? Uh, it's, you're going from a high voltage to a low voltage, so that means you should go from a low current to a high current, so it should be less current. Yeah. That sounds in the right area. No, 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 yeah. Oh no, we're looking at... The, uh, yeah. yeah. You got one out? We're looking at number three. Are you reading number four? Yeah, we're reading number three. Okay. Yeah. So what's the I1 if you know the I2? Well, um, what is V1? It's 10,000, yeah? Yes. And then V2 so V1 over V2 equals I2 over I1. Could use that one if you want to, Joe. Well, okay, okay. One thing I get to do, how do I know which one is I2? Like, is this I2 or I1? The one, the one is the primary, the two is the secondary. The one is what's coming in, and the two is what's being changed. So the power plant is sending 10,000, so that's like the in, and the house is like the out, the two. So it's like one and two is like beginning and end, primary, secondary, first, second. The same, same with the current as well. Yeah, the high voltage. What is the current, the high voltage? No, that's I1 because it starts off. No, no, I, I mean it was given. Oh, yeah, that's the I2, yeah, yeah. Uh, 13 is I2? Yeah. Oh, it's the low voltage. No, it's the voltage that comes... Uh, look, we'll do it now. So, V... Let's do it together. What's the input voltage, V1? 10. And V2? 200. 200. N1? N2? This is what we want. Yeah? 
So cancel, 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 cancel. 50 equals a thousand n over n2. So n2 is a thousand over 50. So it sounds like somebody multiplied instead of divided. 20, uh, 20 turns. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the input power should equal the output power. That means I1V1 should equal I2V2. <coughs> um, we know we want I1, isn't it? Yeah, so I1 equals I2V2 over V1, which will equal 13 times 200 over 10,000. Huh? What are you talking about? D2. D2 more, not I want 13 D2. Because we know the. We know I1, V1, I2, V2, why do we find N2? Because I want to do it this way, because this is how I like doing it. No, but that's. Uh, because yeah. in the exam. I'm thinking about questions where they ask you to find the end in the first part and then do something else in the second part. I'm, the reason I do the questions the way I do it is because I always have in mind what's in the exam. So this is the way I'm doing it. <coughs> Two. Uh, I don't know because I'm doing it in my head, sorry. 0 0.26 is it? Oh, this isn't going five times, this goes in 50 times, yeah. 0 0.26 amps. Uh, yes. Yeah. Can you, can you open this, the other slide? Yeah, yeah. Well, hang on, did you write this down? Yeah, okay. Last question. Yeah, so it's asking what is the current of the high voltage electricity? Yes! If the low voltage electricity has a current of 13 amps. Yes. So low voltage electricity. It's 13. I did. It's, it's I. No. I just want my head. I got zero. Yeah. Three yeah. now. Yeah. No. So. so <laughs> it says high in the beginning, right? Yeah. It's set down. So if the V1 is high and V2 is low, yeah. the I1 is going to be high. Oh. Uh, no one coming no. here is always. No, you're thinking. Don't. Yeah, it depends on the question. I think the mistake you're making is you're thinking about as uh, in is high and 2 is low. But it could be either way around because you have step up and step down transformer. So you shouldn't be thinking one is high and two is low, but one is the beginning and two is the output, the end. Mm -hmm. The one that's coming is high one. Yeah. Is number one. Then yeah, and then the one that you want at the end, like in this case the house, is, is I two. two. Yeah. It's one two start end in out. Yeah. Right. Try the last one here. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> it's not, not at all. Uh, it's no, because I know that sometimes the way you think about something is the way you were told about it in high school, especially at the start about the converting the units. I know the only way you were converting the way you were converting was because that's how you saw it in high school. You know. So I don't hold it against you, Adnan. that. I'm just trying to enlighten you. So this one now is 90% efficient, so we have to deal with that as well. I think we'll do this one together if we just write down the info together. So what do we know here? Let's write down everything we know. Do we know N1? Yes. 100. Do we know N2? Great. Do we know V1? 220. 220. Do we know V2? No. Do we know I1? We know one of the I. The primary, what is the current in the secondary? So we, if, so we know that I1 is 1 in the primary. 1 amp. We don't know I2. So we don't know I2, V2, uh, yeah, and we also know the efficiency is 90%. Okay, so let's write down some formulas. We can have V1 over V2 
equals n1 over n2. That's good. Um, this could give us v2. Yeah? So we'll have v2 equals, you've worked it out already? 22? Yeah, v2 is 22. Okay. And you might think this is the same as what we did last time because now we can say I1 over I2 equals, you know, you can use that formula or you can use the formula I use which is P1 equals P2. But we can't use it here because the P2 is not equal to G1. It's going to be smaller. Why is P2 smaller? Why am I saying that? It's 90% efficient, yeah. So we could now use the formula power out over power in times 100 equals efficiency, which is 90. So instead, you have power 2 uh, equals 90 over 100 power 1. So power 2, which is I2 V2, equals 0 0.9 I1 uh, V1. Now what are we looking for? I2, isn't it? So we can say I2 equals 0 0.9 I1 V1 over V2, if I rearrange this. Um, 0 0.9 times 1 times 220 over 22. What's that, 9? 9 amps. the most difficult transformer question we could have. But in fact, more often than not in the exam, it's more like questions one, two, three. More like two and three. Uh, one is a little little too easy, but it sometimes appears and so does four. Yeah, but you get used to it. Okay, and that's another section done. No homework for that. Um, I think that finishes the electrical part of fields because then, yeah, uh, well, Coulombs is about the atom, but it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like, I, I know it's electrons orbit in protons, but we think about it almost like moons orbit in suns, that they have orbits and periodic times and so on. Anyway. Get out, have another class in here. What, what, what's this thing between you and Kepler now?